Senator Marsha Blackburn, welcome, Senator. I want to talk about China uh, in just a moment, but but first I got to ask you about this. This this guy clearly was a fraudster. He talks about an accounting thing, which is what he was supposed to be doing with other people's money, billions of dollars of investors here in the United States. A million people in the U.S. trusted their funds with him. Uh, do you think they're ever going to get it back? Uh, it is very difficult to see how he's going to make people whole when he doesn't have an explanation for the different entities, whether it is Alameda or FTT or FTX US and what was going on within those companies. I think it's going to be interesting, David, when he comes to Congress, when he is under oath and he has to begin yep. to provide explanations. So this story is far from over. It is something that we will continue to hear more about. There is a tremendous amount of interest in the fintech industry. We have banks that are looking at a digital dollar. We have different components around the cryptocurrencies. So there is interest in this, and I think we'll learn more as he goes through the yeah. hearing. Well, and also uh, whether he got a free pass because of all of his, right. his, his uh, political contributions, most of which went to Democrats. All right, let me deal with China for a second here because it's sure. extraordinary what's going on there. Everybody's hoping maybe against hope the fact that the that perhaps we'll see the end of the Xi regime although they're going to come down like with really hard hammers at some point if they haven't already do you think the administration is doing enough to support the protesters I think the administration could be more effective and do much more. Saying they support the protesters is one thing, uh, but there should be some repetition on that. I do think that it is important for our allies in the region. Uh, they're in the Indo-Pacific. Some of those uh, Indo-Pacific island nations, Taiwan, for them to know that we are watching this very closely, that just as we supported the Hong Kong freedom fighters, that we are supporting the people of China who are rising up against yeah. this authoritarianism and the Chinese Communist Party, who has kept a stranglehold on the people of China for decades. Absolutely. Senator, I got to ask about Apple, because as you know, Apple dropped a, a, a particular app that it had that helped the, the protesters communicate. They did that a couple of weeks ago, pre, uh, assuming that it was it was done with encouragement from the CCP, from the Communist Party. Uh, we had John Kirby, an administration spokesman on Fox News. Martha McCallum was really going after him, particularly because apparently the administration is not talking to Apple about this while they're they're threatening to shut down Twitter. Let me just play that exchange and get your reaction. Roll tape. Because we were just told the other day that the White House is keeping an eye on Elon Musk and Twitter. So why yeah. would you say that from the podium? You didn't say it, but Karine Jean-Pierre said it. And not call Apple out for helping the Chinese government to suppress their own people's ability to communicate. Again, I think we've been very clear and consistent on this, uh, certainly publicly. We've been very open about uh, our desires to be able to see citizens communicate. Uh, and, and, you know, Apple, uh, if this is a decision that they're making, then uh, they should have to speak to that. But uh, we, you know, we're not, we can't and we aren't in the business of, of telling private companies how to, to execute uh, their, their initiatives. Yeah, but Twitter's uh, a but private we, company, too. So why is Twitter getting one treatment and Apple's getting another, is my question. Well, these are completely two different circumstances. Are they really that different? No, they're not that different at all, David. And uh, John Kirby needs to realize that Apple makes many of their products with Uyghur slave labor. Yes. They're in Xinjiang province in, in China. And it is very curious that they would take that action. At the same time, it is very curious to me that the U.S. Open Technology Fund which put the internet up for the Ukrainians, for Russians who were trying to get out video during all of this yeah. that is happening in Ukraine. And the Open Technology Fund has not been there in China to help no. these protesters who are fighting for their lives, fighting for their freedom. You have seen China become very aggressive, the CCP very aggressive. Right. They're aggressive with U.S. companies that are manufacturing there. They are aggressive against the Uyghurs, the Tibetans, the Mongolians, against the Hong Kong freedom fighters. They are bullying Taiwan. If you do not call them to account, 
they will continue. Senator, I, I, I'm getting a wrap, and I, I asked for an extra 30 seconds because you, there's an issue that's near and dear to your heart, to my son, the Marine's heart as well, which yes. is all those Marines and service people uh, who've been dismissed from duty because they wouldn't take the vaccine. My son, in just in his one unit, he lost 15 very seasoned sure. Marines. Uh, these are people that we can't afford to lose. What are you doing to get these people back in? I have an amendment to the National Defense Authorization Act. If uh, Leader Schumer decides he's going to bring it to the floor, we are trying to get the amendment in. It would prohibit the Department of Defense from releasing these individuals, and it would preserve their right to pay in benefits while they go through to negotiate an exemption from this vaccine. To release them when we are short numbers, the Army right. is short 15,000 people this year. We should not be doing this. We need to stand with our men and women in uniform, support my amendment, get it in the NDAA, and protect our troops. God bless you. It's, it's, it's uh, good work because these are our most needed service people that are being dismissed yes. here. Uh, Senator Absolutely. Marsha Blackburn, great to see you. Thank you for being here. Yes. Appreciate